What's up guys, welcome back to DCA. Tonight what we're gonna do is talk about price prediction and analysis of Chainlink. So if you're unfamiliar, Link is an Oracle network. It has more of a stranglehold on its niche within the cryptocurrency asset class than any other cryptocurrency does, perhaps outside of Bitcoin as a store of value. I'm sure you've heard people talking about Link and how it's you know not living up to expectations. It hasn't done very well during this market cycle. And that's partially true. However, Chainlink, unlike many other cryptocurrency assets, performed exceptionally well at times when other assets in this asset class were performing quite poorly. Chainlink was sitting here at around 28 cents. So if we take a move from this time, back in late December of 2018, since we've been on this long winding upward trend, Chain Chainlink is right now sitting up around 7,000%, okay? And at its peak, it was up, if we bring this down, approximately 18,000%. So to say that Chainlink hasn't been performing well is a bit disingenuous because like many other cryptocurrencies, once they go on a massive run like this within a particular market cycle, it can be difficult for them to, you know, continue to make these large gains that we're seeing with other cryptocurrencies. And that all has to do with the market cap. And that's what we always discuss on the channel. Anytime you're analyzing a particular cryptocurrency asset, you have to consider the market cap. All right. So if we just come over here, and we look at Oracle coins by market cap, we see Chainlink is sitting right at around $10 billion. Well, if you go down to the next, the, you know, the next in line Oracle networks, we have 600 million is second. So, I mean, the extent to which Chainlink is dominating the Oracle game in crypto is just incredible. It, no other, coin is doing this within its own niche okay so you can see nothing else is even close in fact if you add all of these up they don't even come close to the value of Chainlink. okay guys so this is the dca index risk model that we're looking at and what this is is a machine learning algorithm model which we've actually developed for bitcoin ethereum and essentially all of the top altcoins okay by market cap that is and what this model does is essentially tells you when an asset is likely overheated and what overheated means is is that individuals have made large profits when you're getting into this 80 and above zone so the scales from 0 to 100 and typically when the you know when the price reaches a point where it's significantly overheated into this 80 and 100 zone that's when we will see a large pullback and in fact if we go look here so back in July of 2019, the DCA index risk model hit up to 100, you know, at the time where Link was hitting right at around $5. And in fact, within, you know, about two months, two or three months, Link was down 70% from that point. So the point of this model is to identify for you when the price is overheated and helps you identify when you should be taking profits throughout a given market cycle. And then once it gets below 50 here, that's when you can start reacquiring. In fact, you can see you could have started reacquiring. You can see that this was in September of 2019. Okay, so you could have been acquiring through here at about $1.60 and you know you had just sold it at $5. You know, about if we go back to the next time that it got into the 90s, right here, it was up about a thousand percent from there. Okay, so that's what this model helps you do. It helps you identify when the price is overrun and when it was likely a good time to be taking profits. After, and by the way, after it reached into the 90 level here, being at, you know, up a thousand percent from there within, again, just about a month, it was down 60%. And in fact, it didn't get back above that level for about you know, 150 days or so. So nearly a half a year during this time, it was below 50. So you could have been reacquiring link down here at 10 to $11 and you had just 
previously sold at around $20. Anytime that we look at one of the altcoins, what we need to do is compare that altcoin to both Bitcoin and Ethereum, since they are essentially the market drivers for the currency asset class, okay? So you can see that Link, you know, kind of like we would expect prior to, prior to 2020 was doing nothing but moving up against Bitcoin, moving up from, you know, a low down at this level here. And it got all the way up to a max at 0 0.0017, all right? Now you can see that we formed this trend line, but like we said, Link, you know, when everything else was not doing well in 2018 and 2019, Link was just, you know, moving right along its way, just continuously moving up with only brief pullbacks, and then it would just continue moving up. So like we said, it was the Oracle, not a Oracle, the Oracle. So people saw that and were acquiring even in spite of overall market weakness. And that's why you see Link just moving up against, you know, even against Bitcoin, when typically altcoins are going to bleed during times of market weakness. So essentially Link was just absolutely dominating the market during, during you know, stages where we hadn't even been into a confirmed bull market yet. Now, what you'll notice is, and this is interesting, is that this level right here, and this is a 0 0.0003 level, this level right here, this, and we're just going to call it 0.35, okay? This 0.35 level was acting as a level of resistance basically through the mid to end of 2019 and then into the early parts of um, 2020. So you can see we bounced off this 0.35 level, bounced off of it again in October of 2019. So first in July, then multiple times in October and November. Then we finally broke through in February. And then you can see that we sort of used this level as support, okay? We made this peak out here at 1.5 came all the way back down to the 0.35 level, hit it, used it as support, bounced up, and look where we've just recently come back down to, right back to the 0.35 level, and we have used it as support. Okay, so this is Link USD versus Ethereum USD. And again, we're seeing sort of the same kind of thing. The second half of 2018, Link is just moving up against Ethereum. Okay, moving up, moving up, and doing nothing but going up against Ethereum. And then it basically does all through late 2018, then all through 2019, and then at least through quarter one and quarter two and a portion of quarter three of 2020. Then you'll notice once we get somewhere out here in about November, we just start bleeding against ethereum and it's funny because this is when the bull market gets kicked off and the reason that we're seeing it bleed against ethereum once the bull market gets kicked off is for the reason what we just said back here link was up from its low in 2018 if we go out here to november of 2020 link was up 8400 percent by that point okay if we look at you know, if you come out here and look at Ethereum, let's look at Ethereum from that time, from that same time period. So we're talking about the middle of 2018 through November of 2020. Ethereum was up 46% during that time period. Link was up 8,418%. Who's not going to take profits when you're up 8,418%? There's no one on earth who's not taking profits. So that is precisely the reason that during all of 2021, we did not see Link do very much. It simply was up too much in the year and a half preceding the start, the really, you know, the parabolic phase of the bull market. You can't expect something that's up 8,500% in a year and a half to just you know, keep going up and keep going up and never ending going up. People are selling their link and moving it in to other projects that have yet to pump. And it only makes sense. You know, when you have Ethereum sitting down here at five or $600,
you're going to be expecting more potential return from Ethereum at that level than you're going to be expecting from Link, which has just gone from 18 cents up to $15, all right? So that's kind of why up to this point through the market cycle, we have not yet seen Link go on a massive run. However, everything at this point though has caught up. Everything has sort of caught up to where Link is, all right? So if we just keep going then, and then now we're going to see where Link may be able to get to based on what we know about this. We said Link BTC, there is this support level right here at this 0.35 level. Link has recently hit this resistance level and now support level at right at 0.0046. So we've bounced off of this support level. Okay, now why is this important? So this is Link USD on the weekly time scale. And we're going to talk about what Link does because it has a very repeatable pattern that it demonstrates. And it, in my opinion, it's demonstrating that exact same pattern again right now. So we've seen Link numerous times in fairly short order, it will run up. So we had a thousand percent run up. And then what does it do from there? In just several months, it pulls back about 90%, right? So this is early 2018. We pull back about 90% after a thousand percent run up. Then we sort of have this uh, level here that we use as a level of resistance right at around 50 cents. We hit this level, get rejected down to 19 cents hit this level, get rejected down to 19 cents, hit this level, then we finally break through, okay? And from there, we go on another large run, this time up 2,400%. Then almost immediately, we get rejected off of this level that we hit right at around $5, and we go down 70%. And then we start forming our new support level, and we do this right at this $1.60 level. From there, yet again, we have a massive run, we go up 1400%, we get overcooked, it goes up too quickly. And then what does it have to do? Just like always, so down 64% in basically a month, All right. Then yet again, what does it do? It goes up another 600%. And then from there, just like always, it, the second it gets overcooked, because it always does this, it, it breaks out and then it sort of overshoots the mark. And then it needs a large pullback because again, people just made profit of 700%, at least, at least they made 700%. And so they're going to be taking profits. And that's what we see another 75% pullback. And so that's where we're at right now. And each time that it does this, each time it gets overcooked in a, in the form of a breakout, it comes down and tests these support levels, right? So you have these levels that link will get to, and then it will just sort of, for a protracted period of time, it will bounce off these support and resistance levels. And just like we saw with Bitcoin, where we're hitting this support level and bouncing, just like we saw with Ethereum, where we finally come down to this ultimate support level that used to act as resistance back in early 2019, with the US dollar, we are right now at this, or just bounced off of this support level. So it acted as resistance here, and this is this $19 level or so. It acted as resistance and we broke through, finally, after bouncing off of it in November, we broke through in January, came up to these higher levels, and now we've been using this approximately $37 to $40 level as resistance. If we just look at this, you know, if you just zoom out, I think it makes it a little bit more clear. And we're looking at a three month chart here. So you can see this is nine months where it's sort of using this level, this $1.75 level. And then now we're using approximately $19.50 to $20. I mean, look at this. You know, this is over a period of what, dating back to July of 2020. So this $20 level, all right? And now, you know, $19.50 is your close and then your open is 1950 and then it comes back down and closes at 1950 and now we're hanging out right at around this 1950 level so ultimately you have this very defined pattern where 
link will run up too quickly and then it needs to come down a lot. It runs up too quickly and then it needs to come down. And then it runs up too quickly and then it needs to come down. And each time it forms this base over about a year or more, over about a year or more, the time period in which it needs to come back down, form a base, and then head back up. And so we're seeing that again right now. And each time that it gets down to this bottom level, it sits there for a while, and then it will finally go on and break out. Now, I'm not one to just simply buy into technical analysis and say, just because we're seeing this chart pattern in the past, this has to play out again, because I don't believe that that is true. I do, however, believe in looking at things from a fundamental perspective and combining it with long-term price trends. And what that means with regards to Link. So A, we know Link has an absolute stranglehold on its particular sector in the cryptocurrency asset class. That's A. B, and I think this is perhaps more important because Link is basically used by other networks to pay for Link's Oracle services. Okay, so I'm not going to go into a detailed explanation of what Link does, but you'll just have to know Link is basically a medium of exchange if you wish to use Link's services, okay? You pay for those services in Link. So when the, the, you know, those services are paid for, the validator nodes then are rewarded with Link. And what do they do? They're going to be selling the Link. So there's constant sell pressure on Link right now. However, with the upcoming Link 2.0, there's going to be link staking. And in my opinion, this is going to be the catalyst for link in order to break out of this current consolidation that we're in, because now there's going to be something you can do with that link in order to generate additional income. So rather than just selling your link, people are going to be staking it. So it's going to alleviate much of the sell pressure that you're currently seeing on the link token. So in my opinion, like we said, we've seen this before where we form these long winded bases and then we'll go on a breakout and they typically last a while. So six months, a year, a year and a half here before we broke out. And same thing here, we have, you know, about a year before we break out. And now we're sitting right at, since we've been consolidating about a year now, the you know upcoming link staking you know i think this is going to be the catalyst that is going to drive link at least into a breakout and it's kind of tough to say how much that will be link already has a 10 billion dollar market cap so out of all the assets in the cryptocurrency asset class i certainly believe that link should be a top 10 if we just look here and we just look at market cap rank and you go down link is 22nd so you know i I definitely think there's a lot of good projects on the list now, which is actually very promising to see, you know, all these projects with actual use cases. So in my opinion, I think Link in, you know, not in a significant amount of time is going to eventually break out of this $20 level and head to new highs. In fact, I, I do believe it will head above this $50 level. In fact, it would not surprise me if Link were within short order able to get up to you know approaching a hundred dollars if not to a hundred perhaps a 75 dollar level before it starts forming a new base again so overall you know i think people are down on link because it sort of you can think of it as it had its bull market before everything else had its bull market but now everything is on a level playing field so people are going to start like they always do looking for what the next best thing is. And I think people are going to start regaining interest in Link. And then once people realize that staking is an option, I think you're gonna see Link take off again. So that's it for this one, guys. If you guys like this type of content, hit like and subscribe. Head over to the Discord channel if you're interested in the DCA index risk model for Link, and I'll get that sent out to you. And until next time, as usual, see you.